Welcome to the Silver River Chairs channel. We're going to be weaving this Lincoln rocker back. This is an intermediate project and I'm going to be showing you how to do it, assuming you already know how to do the basic six way pattern. So if you need help with that, go to one of our previous videos, um, how to weave around lace cane chair and the caning needle video because I'm going to use the caning needle on this. This project took about three days. I, I like to take a break um, and, and let the material dry to see how the tension is coming along. You have to add quite a bit of slack to the weave when you're first starting out and there are ways to gauge the tension but they're kind of guides. I've, I've never really been 100% happy with how I've woven the chairs previously using um, instructions that I've gotten elsewhere. So I kind of started doing it a little unconventionally. Anyway, there's more than one way to weave a chair. So try this. If you like it, great. This is how I do it. Let's take a look. Here are some screws that have been added to what was previously already there as nails. Dave also took the time to remove this piece completely, scrape down the old glue, add new glue, and add these screws. And also we took the time to rasp off this edge where a lot of breaking happens. So we're gonna work with this chair on its back and you wanna prop it up with a block, something where you can still reach beneath. You will need a ton of these pegs. I'm gonna peg every single hole on these side rails. And then you just need your general caning tool. Use really long strands. If you add the vertical strands first to capture the lower and upper curves, it doesn't quite allow for proper tensioning with the deep horizontal curve at the sides. And then because I weave with a caning needle, I'm gonna go ahead and add the second strand. So you make pairs where the curve is the greatest in the middle. And I'm using the routes that I didn't use on the first strands. I've got what I think is the more important curve in first. Um, I did these horizontals to match this curve, and then I added these fake strands to the verticals. So these will hold this curve, and these are keeping the verticals from popping out too far. I can tell by looking at it this way that these are already too tight, and I'm going to have to loosen them up. I put one strand in and created every other loop here and here. And then I put the second strand in and did the opposite. This allows me to adjust things later. Make sure that these yeah. loops are all flush against the back of the chair. It's really important to look at the back of the chair regularly. That's what people are gonna see. And look, I have a little tiny bit of a twist. So this is something I can fix easily because I didn't double loop on top. As I get down the chair, these will get progressively looser to accommodate this curve. Same thing at the top, progressively looser as I move up the chair, but they're flush here where the curve is the greatest. And these fake strands are added behind what I already wove. So now I have the curve set here and set here. So the peg in every hole keeps that loose tension from backing out. All of these are loose so that I can make adjustments to this tension as well. Four fake strands. I added them beneath all of this work. These strands will come out. I'll be weaving next the rest of these horizontals, doubling them up, testing tension the whole way. Everything else I'm going to be weaving behind these fake strands up top and down below. I'm going to be doing doubled up horizontals in the back. I'm weaving the next horizontal strands beneath the guide strands. I'm going to check tension regularly to make sure that the tension is just looser than the strand above it. Weaving behind. and gently pulling through. It does get a little twisty. This is chair caning. That's what it does. Even though you have the guide strands there, I'm still 
using less tension to go behind those guide strands because less is more in this case. If you just do it taut behind mm -hmm. the guide strands, it's going to be too tight. What I'm looking at here is to make sure when I push down on the cane strand that I just wove in that it's kind of following that curve. I'm going to do that with every single strand, gently pushing down, checking the tension to make sure it follows that larger curve at the low back. Similarly at the top, I'm going to use a little less tension as I move towards the top of the chair. I'm weaving behind the guide strands and I'm pressing down to see that the cane isn't taut but follows the curve at the top of the chair. And a peg in every single side hole will ensure that that extra slack doesn't back down to the back of the chair and cause problems later. And when you add the second strand, you wanna try not to double up the loops on the back you want to add a loop where there's a space of wood. Move down the chair, you're going behind the guide strands with a little less tension. And when you're adding the second part of the pair to the bottom of the chair, you're using progressively less tension as you go down. Going behind these fake strands at the top and bottom, but I'm not just pulling taut against them. They don't follow the curve, they are a guide. And I think that's something that confused me. So with each strand that I put in, I press down, look at the curve and check the tension. And I wanna make sure since I'm doubling up that each strand is side by side. I'm feeling underneath to make sure that nothing is backed out and I'm feeling that that new loop is smooth. Holding tension here and pegging underneath these guide strands and up i'm feeling along multiple points if i just push down it would rise up here and here so i'm going for even tension with the other strand and holding down multiple places feels a little looser than the other guy so i'm just gonna tighten it a wee bit Shift that over. So longer pieces are definitely squirrely, but it's better than having a lot of tie-offs. All right, so separating it so it's a visible pair. Checking several places. Going for even tension with the other strand using that hole. Press down. Look, these look a little looser than these. Might have to adjust that. Uh, the best way to tell if you followed the curve is to get a very damp, not damp, but wet, not dripping, but not just a little wet towel. When you lay it on the back, you can really see if you've followed these curves. Um, if anything is bowing, it's hard to see in the video. It's a lot easier to see in real life. So we'll take our horizontal pairs are lined up neatly and side by side as possible. Swear most of the deeper curve here the doubled strands are on top where there's more of a curve at the top and bottom the pairs of cane are beneath this fake strand once we have all the horizontal pairs in we can see kind of how the spacing is going to work and out it would be really nice if there was a hole right here we'd have very even spacing 
We can always pull this down a little bit, but we don't want to pull it down a lot because we'll test strands and determine if we are going to put in a new strand. So yes, ideally we would put in a new strand and it would be in the middle, right at the edge of the wood. If we put in a strand from here to here, it's going to cover the holes. So we're not going to do that. At the top crest, there's usually a bit of a curve. A lot of times you'll have to add a shorter pair of cane, you know, from hole to hole here. Uh, this one is really straight. If, if we, we put a pair of cane strands in, I think it would just crowd the top and we would lose out on having those nice X's. So again, we'll just shift these up a little bit and shift everything out to match. If you stretch a piece of cane across from hole to hole, you can really tell how much bowing can happen if you don't have these strands in. So the cane strands need to be pretty long, pretty loose. If we take out some of these fake strands, you can see exactly how loose they have to be. So it's a good, a good fist size, several inches. So we need all of that slack to accommodate this curve. So what's next? I'm going to weave these vertical strands in. We are back for day two of this rocker. I ran two pairs of vertical strands here, here, and here. And I still have some of those fake strands, the guide strands in place. I like to let the back dry a little because the cane shrinks. And if it shrinks, then you can see where you need to adjust the tension on the back. So yesterday as it was drying, I noticed that the top was already a little tight. So I was able to loosen the row and back it through. Once I get all this other stuff in, that's gonna flatten out. You do want even tension on the pairs. So I've kind of got it. I probably need to adjust this strand. It's a little tight compared to its neighbors. This one's really loose. It might be an end. It is good. So I can adjust that. So it's, um, well, I need to adjust this too. This is what chair caning is all about. Tiny little adjustments. Once I got to here, it got really tight and I feel like it's bowing just subtly. And I know if I keep weaving and tightening this pattern and then put the diagonals in, it's going to keep bowing. So where the pegs have been removed, I'm going to unthread it just a little and loosen the tension on both strands. At the back, I felt like I had the tension pretty good. The strands are, are similar tension. The pairs of cane are similar tension. And I felt like it was flexible enough at this back part. Basically, overall, my tension was too tight, even though I had that fist width of slack on both sides. So this is a really easy chair to get uh, uneven tension or too tight. Tension. To loosen the tension, the stuff needs to be pliable. I did wet it for a little bit where it's woven and I wet the loops on the bottom because it's so subtle, but basically I unpegged an end. I'm gonna back it out maybe half an inch. I'm gonna transfer the tension across being careful where it was dry and it has the muscle memory, especially. So the tension came out on the loop in the back and I'm just gonna transfer that to the front. Now I'm gonna transfer that loose loop up here to the top and I'm not doing it as tight as it was. Now I'm over here. I'm gonna pull the loop from the bottom much better. Start pegging again, pushing the loop from the bottom, the slack to the top. Pegging is important. I have one hand below to hold the loop and one to push the peg in and transfer as far as your strand goes. So I wove the verticals in pairs, two on this side, two on this side, two in the middle. I kept the guide strands in, there we go, there we go, and one over here. So they're a lot looser than they were now that I did my adjusting. 
and that's a good thing. But I was able to use this and I'll show you how to do it. Um, to do the caning needle, you need two strands at a time to make it work. All of the verticals, very long. So let's show you how that's done. So I'm bumping up the first of the guide strands here. I'll go ahead and take that out. And I'll bring up one of these long strands from one of these earlier rows. The trickiest thing about weaving in separate sections is remember to do it correctly so that this row is opposite this row is opposite this row is opposite this row is opposite this row, etc. I'm coming in with the caning needle. It may have been easier for me to do this without the seat being woven, but it's not impossible to negotiate. Always make sure you wove correctly. Thread the second part of the pair through with the needle and we're gonna to need to pull this way. We don't wanna pull down because it'll scratch, but we can go through the back. You can weave this by hand too. Just weave over and under. Every row you weave will be opposite the last one you just wove. Once you get to the guide strands, you'll just pop those out. And it's a good idea to stay somewhat organized keeping your horizontal pairs together, which are very shifty right now, and keeping your vertical pairs about where you want them to be. So I'll keep weaving using the long bits here and here. Um, and the long bits in the middle and the long bits on the edges. At some point, it's gonna get too tight to use the caning needle. So I'll have to weave by hand, but it's the same process. So as I come to these short strands, I'm gonna remove them. I'm gonna keep it organized and then I'll get to get rid of all of these pegs. With the flexible double pointed caning needle, you thread from top to bottom every single time. There's a hole on either side, so you can catch cane coming out of a hole in the top or coming out of a hole in the bottom. Keep weaving and organizing your rows. Organizing is very important. Here it's a little bit too tight to use the caning needle, so I'm weaving over one, under one, doing opposite the row previously woven, and I weave five or six intersections at a time, pull the slack, five or six intersections, pull the slack, organizing as you go the whole time. And now that the pattern is more open, I can use the caning needle again. I'll eventually have to pull that uh, short row out, but caning needle up until I get several more holes over, and then I'll weave by hand again. These panels are big, and it's important to rotate your chair for easier access. Don't reach across trying to weave. I like to use a kneeling stool um, or work with the chair on a high table if you have one. Once you're done weaving all four of the foundational steps, it's important to spray and organize the grid before you move on to diagonals. It was a lot of work, so it's really tempting to leave that for the night and then come in the next day and organize the grid. But the cane has muscle memory and it'll stick where it was bent the day before. Step four is done. All of that slack is taken out. It's got a decent profile. I will admit that some of these look a little loose, um, but I can still tighten them. Or we can see what happens when the diagonals come in because you'll have 
diagonals going under and over these settings, pulling that weave even tighter. I haven't done any tie off and uh, this is something that I obviously wait to do because I want to do some adjusting. Yeah. Way to tie this off neatly is uh, with the neatest is to do a no knot tie off. And that's something that's in uh, some of our other videos. So I'll try to do that as much as possible. And then I'll try to make it so that the ends face this ledge on either side. And so any ends that happen up top will face down. The way that we weave here is that we pick up any of these long strands that we've coiled up and save for later and start them for a diagonal. So this can come here and create a loop or it can go to that side and create a loop. Anywhere that doesn't have a loop, I'm gonna to try to make one, but it's not the end of the world if one doesn't appear. I don't like the way it looks crossing like that. So this will either go down or up. Again, I'll let it dry overnight and see what it looks like to start um, diagonals tomorrow. If your chair has really deep bends, there was one we had that had a really deep bend right here. I would start doing diagonals a little sooner um, just to keep these loose, loosey goosey bits in line and just to make sure it's really gonna flow the way you want it to. And it's now time to pull out all of those pegs that are in the way. Got to leave the ones that have ends to fly off. But other so I was able to get all of these diagonals done just with the things that were dangling from previous rows. I did the no knot method whenever possible. That's what these things are sticking out. So I haven't done any tie offs yet on the back. I don't mind tie offs. Um, a ton of tie off doesn't look fantastic. It's kind of what distinguishes the beginner weaver from the advanced weaver, but I don't obsess over having absolutely no tie offs. So I'm gonna keep weaving on this. I'm not gonna cross this corner. I saved this guy for weaving um, the binder. Otherwise, it's just the same as weaving any other chair seat. In fact, it's a little easier because you don't have short rows, maybe at the top, um, but you don't have the short rows to, to have to worry about where does a diagonal go. You're always gonna catch these settings at the edges going under them and across or over them and across, making these lovely little X's. It's not just aesthetic, um, it's structural. It keeps these strands from shifting. So very important, keeping these strands from shifting. So all that tension has been taken up with the diagonals. You can see this spot here, it's kind of wobbly. And that's where I don't have any diagonals. So once I get those woven, that wobble is going to be gone, just like here. Here's the side, I'm kind of side front. I'm side side, you can't really see anything. So I think I did okay. It's not my best work. My best one was the last one I did. Um, <laughs> that's in somebody's living room right now. But here's what it looks like from this angle. Man, I really want another hole on the sides over there. Uh, you can see here, I didn't quite get all of these back bits covered, but the binder will do that. I had some strands end and still quite a bit left. So I'm going to do the binder here, here, it's going to go up. This one's going to go across and we'll see how far we get with this one up the back. I don't like cutting the corner from here to here, just personal preference. You do. Voila, she looks good, yeah? The tiniest bit of bowing, which drives me insane. Um, but I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a dangerous amount of bowing that's going to mess up the chair. I just wish it would be perfect. But don't we all? Uh, we would anger the chair gods if we were perfect, though, wouldn't we? So 
Anyway, I think it looks great. One thing about these rockers, unless they have a curve at the top, you have a zero short rows. So you can get these nice X's along the edges. On the back, I think it looks nice and neat. I was able to use long strands to weave each of these four sides without crossing over here. I did have to, <laughs> I had two holes left before I had to end my strand and tie on and tie off just for two holes at the very end. Um, I would say give yourself about four days to do this project, but you do wanna get it done within a chunk of time. Um, this isn't something you can leave and come back to in a couple of months or especially longer than that. Well, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.